This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and this week we would normally have Omega with us, but she is currently uh, getting her feet wet and planting her roots over there across the pond in Northern Ireland. Hooray, 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 she's finally going to be able to live close to and with her actual wife, so so she's off doing that and getting set up. Hopefully the next time her turn comes around, she will be back and there will be much squee. Or if you want to listen to this week's lesbian talk, there will be a lot of squee there as well, I'm sure. So, while Omega's gathering up all of the squee, we've got Jess Kittrick back with us. How you doing, Jess? Hey, I, I love filling in and everything, but like, I fill in a lot. Like, a lot. Yeah, you've been filling Like, in. I realized a lot. <laughs> this, is like, this is like your third time being on the show. In like a month. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like sitting here going, uh, well, I guess I should do it. He's sort of my boss or something. Yes. Kind of uh, <laughs> one of these days I'm going to learn how to say no. Yeah. Which, which if you had, I would have just, you know, you know, found, dragged up somebody else. But you're like, you know, you've been here. We seem to have a good thing going. So it's like, you know what? First choice. Boom. There you go. Yeah, there you go. And besides, the check's already in the mail. <laughs> I don't get paid for this. What are you talking about? I barely get paid for my stuff. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, why do I, so who keeps mailing me all these checks? I think Man, I wish I had your life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyways, as you hear, we all, we do have a guest this week. Going on the whole uh, newbies on the site uh, kick that we've been going on the past few weeks. This is C. Farah. How you doing, C. Farah? I am doing great. I am just happy to be here, and I'm going to be uh, having a lot of fun here today. I mean, uh, we have some good stories and talk about some whatever we want to talk about. Oh, yeah. And I'm happy to be uh, meeting Jess for the first time. Yay! <laughs> yes. Hi. Uh, <laughs> hello there. <laughs> so, uh, for those of us who... Well, not those of us, because I already know. But, uh, but for those out there who don't know who you are and what you do, uh, how about you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Well, my name is Chris. That's my real name. Sometimes I go by Chris. Sometimes I go by Seafarer. It really depends on the time of day, my mood, whatever. I I I do comic reviews where I just take a look at uh, comics in a positive light. I mean, I don't do negative reviews like anyone else does. I mean, we all know Linkara does um, bad movie, bad comics, and I'm just like. Yeah, I want to do something positive, because I know that there are some good comics out there, especially some in the 90s, actually. Mm -hmm. Some people bash 90s comics. I know for a fact that there are good 90s comics. I've lived through that decade, so I know. (laughs) And I also uh, do a webcomic, which I hasn't been kind of hesitant to post on uh, R.T. Gomer, because I wasn't really sure how well of a fit it is. It's basically your, your own basic superhero adventure where... You have uh, like young superheroes trying to make a name for themselves in the world, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's just been based on a story that I wrote way back in the 90s, like 1996 was when I started writing them, and uh, just kind of went on from there, and then I started doing a comic first, and then I started to do a web show because I wanted to talk about comics in a positive way, right. and I'm 27 episodes in. Yay! And they'll be showing up on the site. And and I really hope you'll start posting uh, your comic, uh, Star Bolt, right? Oh, yeah. I'll see what I can do. I mean, i got to find a starting point because I have over 200 of them, and I don't know where to begin. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, but, but, yeah. And one thing he did neglect to mention, which I think is really awesome, is your comic is actually more of a is a, a sprite-based comic where you use sprites. I think yours are all custom-made, right? Yeah, they are. They're, they're custom-made, and... Yeah, they originally were Pokemon-based sprites, but then uh, our late friend Juario, God rest his soul, he gave me a sprite template that I use to this day. And every time I look at the Star Wars comic and the sprites I made, I think of him because he gave me the template. Yeah. And I've been using those ever since. And that was a long, long time ago. Oh, yeah. I actually, like, oh, God, I'm, I am 
dating myself again. Ten years ago, <laughs> back when I was in college and working Disney and everything, I actually dabbled with like customized sprites, sprite comics, and everything myself. And it, it it can it can be difficult for in for you being able to. You said what over two hundred, about two hundred, three hundred. You said. Yeah, over two. Let's see. Look at my uh, thing here. Yeah, um, two hundred and almost two hundred fifty comics by my account. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. And me at the time I was doing it, you know, I was inspired by the you know, the granddaddy of web of uh, Sprite Comics, Bob and George, and they're just like four panel daily things. Yeah, Most... I don't know how they managed to do it four panels every day. I mean, <laughs> I have to write. Uh, I do like uh, script writing. For um, over like a course of a day or so, I send it to my beta reader. She checks it out, and I send it to my uh, collaborator. Mm-hmm. It's like he and I are like Stanley and Jack Kirby at this point. <laughs> but hey, yeah, he gives me some ideas. We bounce ideas back and forth, and we and I do the comic, and I show him some sprite ideas and stuff. And he tells tells me what works and what doesn't work. Sometimes he'll tell me one of the characters looks like a Power Ranger, Super Sentai guy. And I'm just like, well, maybe we can make it work somehow, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, but yeah so over 250. Holy shit. <laughs> almost 250. Almost almost 250. Okay. Yeah. It's it's still up there and it's still very goddamn impressive. And, yeah, thank and, you. And, and, I mean, especially since you're not just a four-panel comic. I mean, the ones that I've looked at, they're like, you know, longer, actual eight. To, com- to compare it in terms of format, more like eight-bit theater, to where yeah. they're like actual comic pages, not just four-panel fluff. So, yeah, I I tend to go into real exhaustive detail with my story writing. I mean, yeah. I can do like a... I'm not like J.R.R. Tolkien level. Like, mm-hmm. you know, just grab a butterf- butterfly and like... Uh, you know, a page or something like that. No, no. It's just more like you gotta be more descriptive with your writing, whatever you do. You know, show, don't tell. So you gotta show the action, write the dialogue, and just let everything flow naturally. Oh, yeah. and that's how I've been doing it. Mm-hmm. And you know what? So far, so good. <laughs> hey. Uh, I mean, hey, almost 250. You're doing well, man. You are very much doing well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, so and speaking of other people who are doing well, I actually, you know, I've got a shout out this week. Um, I've recently discovered him. You, you both may, everybody out there may already know him, but I just discovered him. Damn it, uh, Markiplier. He was a YouTube Let's Player. I've noticed him doing more kind of horror, horror type video games or what have you. Um, I guess I would guess he's more known for like you know, you know, yelling and screaming at different things and just being. He'll play a game, and then he'll also chew the scenery with the game. Um, Becky and I just the other night watched his uh, run-through of the Stanley Parable. <laughs> and there's just there's just one point where, where he gets to one of the endings, and the game is, is, is telling him, think about it, think about it, think about it, think about what you're doing. And he sits there for a moment, and then he says, thought about it, and then he does what the game does not want him to do anyway. Uh, <laughs> to not get too spoilery. For uh, either the game or the run, <laughs> uh, so um, so yeah, that that's Markiplier. You can find him on YouTube. Um, God, how did I find him before? Probably through pushing up roses. <laughs> I don't hey, know. she's a good person to uh, look for uh, good less players with. I mean, I I see a couple less players. I mean, I, I watched uh, Josh from the Bit Block, and he played like Animal Crossing New Leaf, mm-hmm. and he did like Daily Diaries. He was. Very funny, very entertaining. Yeah, but he's not really much of a fan of the new Super Smash Brothers coming out. Oh, yeah? I really, I really want that game, by the way. So oh, it's yeah. gonna be awesome. And I look forward to uh, kicking your butt as uh, Pit Gomer. <laughs> oh, just wait till I get my hands on Lucario and Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm gonna go with Mega Man. Of course. Yeah. So, uh, Jess, I realize you're probably a little on the spot on this, but do you have any shoutouts for this week? Um, yeah. I don't really, um, no, actually I do, um, actually my fellow RT Gomer producer, uh, Magic Steve, because, uh, I'm working diligently on that damn crossover, <laughs> and, uh, I'm hopefully gonna have it done by Thursday, but I have no idea if it's gonna happen. 
let's hope so. Let's hope so. I'm looking forward to it. She's actually, Jess has actually shown me some of the stuff she's done. It is amazing. You guys are going to love it. Um, but I'm currently uh, rendering the first part of the crossover right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's done. It just needs uh, approval from uh, uh, Steve and uh, the director, and that's it. Dang. And everything else is pretty much good. So, um, yeah. That's... You've got you've got like a small team going right here. I, I don't I don't have a team usually. I mean, I've got like. One one person who's helping me write uh, like like some stuff for later on, but it's like currently there's like not much of a team. Well, well, okay, you, you count Becky because she does the title card artwork, but this, well, I mean, I have Casey, my title card artist. I have, um, you know, I work with Joe on the scripts. Mm -hmm. um, when we were at Con Bravo, uh, Zenith Will Rule, uh, who is a fellow Nerd Vice contributor, uh, helped us film our crossover with me and Magic Steve. And, um, but normally it's just me and, me and Joe. Uh -huh. Um, but, you know, Lewis keeps, uh, Linkara keeps asking me to, uh, as he likes to call it, Riker this shit. <laughs> and, uh, take control, oh, and take control of the show because of, um, you know, random crap that's been going on in my life. Everything from uh -huh. personal reasons to, you know, um, the of loss of, of various things yeah uh so you know it's one of those things where um i'm hoping to shoot an update video either tonight or tomorrow but as of right now um i don't know what i'm gonna say uh but i do know i'm going to have at least um three videos coming in the next like week or so so sweet and hopefully great. hopefully <laughs> hopefully hey, that's, that's great lewis is a good guy though um i he, do he, love lewis yeah. Lewis yeah, is good I, I, people. I, yeah. I don't love him. I don't love him like a lover. I love him like a brother from another mother. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with my one of my good friends, Dodger Dodger of Zion. She's she's good people too. Lewis will uh, retweet some of my uh, videos for me. He retweeted my Captain America comics number one one. Oh nice. Today. Yesterday I almost made a joke saying, "Hey, no such thing as reviewer dibs, huh?" Because I remember he uh, did that same comic like what three years ago yeah. yeah oh god that that made me think is because uh recently i recently re i think within the last month released the uh mama mia review for my series well my review series play it to the back row and not around that same time or maybe a little bit before that diva also has has had i think she had I don't remember if it was recently uploaded or if she had just uploaded it to youtube because of blip or whatever but she has also done mama mia Although I think we can all agree on one thing when it comes to Mamma Mia. Pierce Brosnan should not be allowed to sing ever. What is Pierce Brosnan do, even doing in an Italian-based production? I don't know. That's not even... No, that's not even based from a t from Italy. It, it, the Mamma Mia originates from England, from London. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. that's okay. I you did know, not know that. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> I thought it was Italian because, you know, Mamma Mia, whatever. I think it's set somewhere around Italy. But the the production and the main characters are all British. Okay. So maybe they're expatriates. I don't know. Ah. Uh, but yeah, so that's I guess that's about all we got. And also, I do want to mention that Casey's also a producer on Archie Gomer Productions. Just just saying. <laughs> that's true. She is. Yes. So we got like a little close knit family here. Yay! We're get, we're getting there. We're we're like building and growing and expanding and hooray! Oh. We're expanding an empire. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I could probably run it better than uh, certain other websites. Project <laughs> Entertainment. Excuse me. Mm. Mm. Well, with that attitude, positive attitude, you're gonna go places. Oh yeah, I hope so. <laughs> oh, so with that, uh, we'll go ahead and hit our news, and we're gonna start in Northern Virginia. Oh, Hooray! No. Mm -hmm. Shall I uh, get the banjos? Bring, Maybe. Bring, bring, bring. Have them on standby. Okay. Uh -oh. okay. <laughs> Magic for folk of Northern Virginia rejoice, for no longer will your presence be unwelcome in the town of Front Royal. Yesterday, or whenever this was posted, the Front Royal Town Council moved forward repealing a decades-old town code that prohibits fortune tellers, quote-unquote gypsies, and quote-unquote magic arts. The Northern Virginia Daily reports. 
A long-standing town law has come under fire lately for A, being outdated, B, containing pejorative and insulting language like the term gypsies, and C, violating First Amendment free speech rights. The council voted 4-3 to three to pass a motion to repeal the law on a first reading, with more than 50 people in attendance, and even more gathered outside the Warren County Government Center to pray before the meeting. Naturally, it was a contentious reading for Front Royal residents. I feel like we're, the, we're in the movie Footloose, but reverse, where kids wanted to dance, but the stead state said they couldn't, and here we are. The folks in the community says, please impose our moral viewpoint on everyone else. Council member Brett Herbeck, Herbeck reportedly said. Some residents did not agree, while others who say they were raised or, or are past, practicing Catholics agreed that it's time to strike down the ban. Good on you. And there were others who felt strongly about why the council would take action to benefit pagans from NVD. Mm. Elizabeth Pohl asked the council, asked council why it would take the action to benefit pagans, a small part of the population. Pohl suggested the town adjust the license fee for, to, for inflation to $2,987 by her calculations and include more questions on the business license applications, she added. Pohl also linked to the thrift store on Main Street and the tarot card reading operation to the Center for Workforce Development and its efforts to provide opportunities to lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender youth. Paul said she surmised the center plans to recruit youth to increase the number of homosexuals in Front Royal. <laughs> well, you know, they gotta, they gotta have their blue oyster gay bars, you know. Oh, God. Yeah, because, you know what? When I was in college, one of, my, one of the first friends I made in college was a pagan. And, in fact, she was even a bisexual pagan. And I hung out with her a lot. In fact, developed a crush on her even. At no point did she try and recruit me into anything other than heterosexuality. Oh, no, 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 no. My favorite part of this entire article is Paul told the council a quote-unquote strong connection exists between homosexuality and paganism. Right, because all um, pagans are homosexual, Right. Wait. I'm pretty sure I've met people who are also straight pagans and transsexual pagans and, ooh, I don't know, bisexual pagans and pansexual pagans. I mean, here's the thing. The thing is, is that every single religion, no matter what religion you are, pagan, Catholic, Jewish, um, Presbyterian for any reason, like all of those religions, they have every gender orientation and sexual orientation. So even if people even if people don't openly advertise what they are, there are people who identify as most everything under the sun within each religion. So yeah, this is sort of a good step in the right direction, but to, you know, say there's oh. a strong connection between homosexuality and paganism is kind of against science. Just saying. Yeah, kind of goes against everything we've learned in uh, basic biology, basic science. <sighs> yeah, wow, this article. I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to imagine somewhere tying back into one of the other shows that I've done, where somebody claimed to be Triggerkin, and now I'm just imagining a pagan Triggerkin. <laughs> I don't. No, 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 no. I, I, I at the time, it, at first, I questioned how one could be Triggerkin. But the person was like, well, I, I, I trigger bad emotions and everything. How do you do that? Well, I was standing near a baby, and the baby started crying. So I triggered the baby. Babies cry at anything. Babies will cry if you just um, move around really loudly, you know. Yeah. They'll, they'll cry at the drop of a hat. Yeah. Actually, well, yeah. not every baby, but most oh, babies. Yeah. But most babies, most of, most babies I've come into contact with, actually... I was in a church earlier today, and there was a small child, and uh, she was giggling and, you know, saying "dada" like throughout the whole service, and it was it was really adorable, but at the same time, it was really disruptive. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, babies are pretty unpredictable. So. Yeah, wait till they get older, three uh, years old. My nephew's uh, nephew's four years old. He he's a handful. Let me tell you, six kids living around here. They're all generally pretty handfuls here, especially the youngest one, who is four years old. Yeah. And has been spoiled near rotten. Oh, that's God a shame. God damn it. Ugh, yeah. And, and to, my, to my parents' credit, they are trying to fix it and correct it, but it is, 
It, it is like fighting an uphill battle while gravity is increased to 300%. Not very easy to do. Nope. Oh. So this, this next one is out of Louisiana. De Quincey, Louisiana, even. What many teenagers these days are considering a harmless prank has landed one online gamer in more trouble than he could have ever imagined. Excuse me. In a Louisiana courtroom today, 15-year-old Paul Horner broke down in tears after a judge found the young man guilty on two counts of domestic terrorism and was sentenced to 25 years to life in federal prison. Horner is the first person in history to be charged with what is known as swatting, a growing trend in which a person anonymously files a false police report, such as a murder or bomb threat, in hopes of provoking the police to raid an individual's home or business. Prosecutors in the case proved that Horner called in multiple false threats against rival online gamers, resulting in SWAT team raids of their residence. Oh my god, there's so many things wrong with this kid. I don't even know how to start. Okay, well, first of all, first of all, I think the only reason that a 15-year-old's name is being released is because he was charged as an adult. Right. Because normally under the age of 18, they do not release names. But domestic terrorism, I think, is only an adult chargeable offense. So if they charged him with two counts, that means they tried him as an adult. Yeah, as at this point, yeah. it's You can't say that this guy, this kid, did not know what he was doing. If there's two counts, then yeah. I, I don't think that... You know, I've never even heard of this. I don't think I've ever heard of swatting in my entire life, actually. I haven't right? either. And I actually play online, like games online. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of this. I've I mean, heard maybe of it, it's like a little bit in the past, but never to quite this degree. What is it like? WoW or Call of Duty, maybe? Uh, or... It could be any online game. Usually, a popular one. Uh, Basically, a kid doesn't like something another player is doing, and so they'll call the SWAT team on them with some kind of bomb threat or, or, or oh, false bomb threat from this person here. You know, and it, it's basically using up the time and the resources of the SWAT team to silence somebody or, or get them off your game or what have you or just make their life a living hell. What is wrong with just pizza bombing somebody? I mean, come on. Even just as recent as maybe 10 years ago, online gaming wasn't as prevalent, but you know what? If you got pissed off at somebody on the net and you had their phone number or their address, you'd pizza bomb them. You'd, you'd, you know, you'd have pizzas delivered to them that they didn't order. Which, by oh. the way, folks, if my address ever gets out there and you try and pizza bomb me, good fuck luck because no place around here delivers here. So, nice try. I'll find okay. a way. I'll, I'll, Actually... I'll, airdrop the, I'll airdrop the pizza over your house. There you go. <laughs> Actually, yeah. look, defense lawyers told the courtroom that Horner, who goes by the gamer tag BadassDog69, was upset <laughs> after being repeatedly beaten by a fellow gamer at Battlefield 4. After obtaining the rival gamer's information, prosecutors say that Horner called police and reported a murder hostage situation at the home. SWAT team then raided the house, shooting and critically injuring the live streamer's father in the process. Following an investigation of the in in incident... Horner was charged as an adult using provisions of the 2001 Patriot Act. He, his guilty charge stems from two counts of domestic terrorism related to his manipulation of an enforcement response and injuries to innocents resulting from those actions. Mm. Prosecutors played the audio of the 911 call to the jury. I just shot and killed four people. If any police enter my home, I will kill them too. Wow. That, okay... The, okay, I know you read the first thing, and that was, like, a lot of things wrong, but I also think that that is, like, one of the most important paragraphs in the entire thing, because it explains why he was charged with domestic terrorism. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Injured, they injured his dad. They injured the other gamer's dad. Yeah, like, that's not cool. Like, no, what if he shot, they shot him and paralyzed him for life? Like, are you freaking serious right now? <laughs> like. Yeah. Yeah, because the SWAT team does not mess around. They do not play. No, no, they don't. If they think there is domestic terrorism stuff going on inside a house, nine times out of ten, if unless you're like tied up, bound and gagged, or otherwise incapacitated, they're likely to come in shooting. Exactly. Not necessarily because they're supposed. Not necessarily because they're wanting to be terrorists themselves. They want to try and neutralize the situation as fast as possible. Well, and you never know mm -hmm. if you walk in 
and you see somebody with a gun, they get startled and they can shoot a hostage. Take down the person that supposedly, you know, in this case, supposedly holding somebody hostage. I, you know. Well, here's the other thing. You, you know that you know that terrible uh, Will Smith movie, Wild Wild West. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I'm reminded of what Ulysses S. Grant said about Smith's character, where he goes in, guns a blazing, shoot first, shoot some more, shoot later, and then when everybody's dead, try to ask a question or two. I feel like that's what the SWAT team does in cases of domestic terrorism. Like they don't really care if you're innocent or not because they got a call that was like, oh, well, you know, murder hostage. Oh, well, we should totally respond to that. And then when they get there and they kill or shoot people mm-hmm. and then they go, oh, well, this was a mistake. Like you can't you can't take back killing or injuring somebody. That's not something you can take back. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, that's 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 terrible. This is yeah. terrible. And Horner. OK, Horner. Here's the thing. This kid should not be able to have that kind of power. I, I, I mean, in terms of being able to call the police, like, where is his parents? Like, maybe his both his parents work, but, like, what if, like, his parents didn't teach him right from wrong? They didn't teach him, like, you know, calling the cops and saying domestic terrorism is a bad idea. He's 15. He knows what it's like to grow up in a world post-9-11. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, that's, that's 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 I think that's also a fault of the parents for not being able to, you know, help this kid like learn right from wrong in terms of gaming, you know, courtesy I guess. Yeah, gaming yeah. etiquette. And, yeah. and I totally agree. Yeah, exactly. Um, you guys remember when we were growing up, right? We we were bombarded with these like specials that say you know call nine one one when it's actually in an emergency. Mm-hmm. I think we kind of need those back again. Those little PSAs. You know, get a My Little Pony uh, PSA about drug dealing or something like this. <laughs> my Little Pony with drug dealing. <laughs> oh, my Sorry, God. Sorry, just the juxtaposition of those two. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, Pinkie Pie is already kind of, you know. Although, although I, I, I can, although, okay, I still laugh, but I also laugh at the fact that that the, you know, the, the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon, you know, not the good one, the other one. Uh, yeah. You know, they they had the, the uh, Sonic Says where he was, like, talking about, like, like uh, you know, yeah. molestation, child molestation and everything. If somebody touches you in a way that you don't like, you get out of there or whatever, you know? Well, yeah. No good. And I really like this judge. Um, the judge, Arthur Digsby, uh, was forced to have the kid removed. Uh, at multiple points, he bro- Horner broke down into fits of sobbing hysteria and calls to his mother to the point that the presiding judge had to force him to be removed. Um, hearing the sentence of 25 years to life, uh, he began sobbing. He told the youth that he felt bad for him, but ultimately he was responsible for his own actions. In- ignorance of consequence because of lack of thought absolves no one. Thinking that your actions were only a prank does not make them only a prank. Leave your petty pride in the realm of digital fantasy where it is safe, because as young Mr. Horner has learned, Actions in the real world don't have a reset button. Every parent should make sure that their children understand that. Thank you, Mr. Digsby. Yeah. Yes. I, I like mean, this. did you see the other part of this? Like, just before 6 a.m., SWAT team members entered the house of McGee. They were there to serve a warrant, which permit the team to search the mobile home where he and his pregnant girlfriend were living, reacting to the pre-dawn forced entry the guy grabbed a rifle propped against the bedroom door frame and fired at the unidentified intruders, killing a 31-year-old sheriff's deputy. Yeah. Which... So this kid killed somebody and injured somebody else through his own actions. Like, mm-hmm. I'm surprised that they're giving him 25 to life. He should have de- he should have life without parole, to be honest. Yeah, at, at the very mm-hmm. least. Let him stew in it. He, it's, it's obviously... You know, he is obviously in the, oh, shit, I fucked up, I want to fix this, that sort of thing. You know, it's going to eat at him, obviously, especially mm-hmm. since he's been caught and, and been tried and convicted. So letting him live, I think, would be the worst punishment ever. Letting yeah. him live and not being able to fix anything. Be, you know, letting him live and stew in it because, oh, fuck this kid. I have no sympathy for him. None. I mean, I, I have yeah. I have a little bit of sympathy because I think that I, I I think that this is one of the biggest problems of living up uh, living in a gaming universe. When I was young, 
I was only allowed to play video games for a certain number of hours a week. Um, and that was after all of my chores and like all of my homework was done. And then I was like able to play like NES or whatever, or N64. Like my parents understood the need for structure and, you know, telling me right from wrong in terms of like, you know, you don't, you don't, um, do terrible things to people, whether they're online or in person or whatever. So it's teachable. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you, the golden rule, you know, teach Treat others how you would treat yourself, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And do not swat other people. Do 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 not swat other people unless they ask for it. And, and even then it has to be between two consenting adults. But that's a different kind of swatting. Uh. <laughs> At first when you linked me to story, I thought that was what was about. But then again, I have a dirty mind sometimes. So. <laughs> Oh, we oh, all have dirty know. minds. We all have dirty minds here. Yeah. Most of us are in our 20s or 30s. I'm in my so 30s. We all have, yeah, so yeah. we all have dirty minds in that time yeah. frame. Yeah, we're we're all right. And then, of course, there are people that are much older than us that still have dirty minds. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, so I think I think dirty minds, is it's not based on age, so. That's yeah. true. Dirty minds for being creative. Kind of the same thing. Yes. Okay. So this next one, oh god. Mother Nature is not perfect. Oh you... god. Yeah. Sorry. No, no. I don't know. It's just that the first sentence okay. makes me fear the worst. <laughs> yes, and you are right to fear the worst. The human uh -huh. animal has a lot of flaws, and we have spent centuries correcting them. Prothesis, surgery, medicine and mm -hmm. vitamins are just a few examples of how we've overcome flaws in our biology. One of those flaws, a vitamin K deficiency in newborns, is incredibly easy to deal with and poses no danger. A uh -oh. single injection of vitamin K at birth all but eliminates the risk of internal bleeding due to natural deficiency. Yet anti-vaxxer parents are starting to refuse the shot. Why? <clears throat> because it just wasn't enough to endanger their children by refusing vaccines? A quote that they put in the article. A urge tiny... to kill rising. Oh, it'll go higher. A tiny percentage of parents have always declined the shot, but the numbers are growing, according to a new study. The research also found that children of these parents are 15 times more likely than others, at 15 months old, to have received none of the vaccinations re recommended by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. <sighs> Our finding of a link between vitamin K refusal and vaccine refusal was very concerning, says Senior Arthur Sh author, rather, Shannon MacDonald, a postdoctoral fellow at University of Calgary F Faculty in, of Medicine. I apparently cannot read today. Apparently. We had, yeah, we had yeah. expected a correlation between the two, but I had not expected the association to be so high. Vitamin K is not a vaccine or related to the manufacturing of vaccines. So, because... Uh, you just... <laughs> vitamin K is... It's, it's, a, it's a vitamin we... We yeah. we learned that in in nutrition class. We we learned that in biology. My parents are doctors, by the way, and they would tell me, you know, by, take your vitamins because they they they're required for your um system. You know, you need vitamin D for energy, vitamin B to help you play. You know. Yeah. Remember, iron helps us play. Simpsons taught us that. There you go. Hey, we can learn a lot of things from the Simpsons. Yes, and we can. Interesting thing, we can learn a lot of things from cartoons. I know. Who would have thunk? It, uh, and, 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 he, and, and it is, and it's worse than just the vitamin K injection. There's a growing anti-modern medicine movement that is placing children in danger because their parents are morons. This yeah. group of parents often shares a particular worldview of health that includes a preference for natural health remedies and questions the standard recommended practices of established medical authorities. Okay, here's where I'm sort of leaning towards what these parents believe, but not in the way that you're thinking. Okay. I think that, okay, now, I don't have children. I'm probably not having children for a little bit longer. I've said to many people, I'm probably waiting until I'm at least 30 to have kids. But here's the thing. I do think that, like, natural health remedies like tea and, like, honey and stuff like that is good for you. Because I'm one of those people who doesn't like taking pills if I don't have to. Right. But at the same time, I'm one of those people who also believes, um, oh, I don't know, vaccinations save lives. And also, oh, I don't know, 
if it weren't for vaccines, we would still have polio and smallpox and, you know, the, oh, or for instance, the Ebola virus, like what happens if they actually find a vaccine for it and actually cure and eradicate Ebola off the planet? Like, you're going to tell me that you would rather have your kids running around maybe being subjected to these things and not having the vaccination to fight these battles for them because their immunity is weak. Cause when you're a child, your, your immunity is not as good as when you're an adult, unless you've had, you know, some kind of life threatening illness or whatever it is. But the way they build immunity is by getting sick. Like when you get the chicken pox, that actually helps you build your immunity. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if you don't give them the vaccines and the antibodies that they need to fight these diseases off, these kids are not going to be able to have the same immune systems that we have because we've gotten vaccinated. We have all our injections that we need and we have the tools necessary for medical science to help us fight these remedies, like all these illnesses and whatever. Right. And natural, natural health remedies do help you. Like I drink tea, a lot of tea and I don't really get that sick because I drink a lot of tea because of all the, you know, the natural stuff like in oranges and whatever, what have you. But at the same time, the only reason I do that is because I don't, I have a, I have a thing about taking pills, but I, I've had all my vaccines. So I don't have an issue with taking pills when I need to, yeah. but it's, it, to me, I, I, I see where they're coming from, where they want to have like natural health remedies, but don't question the standard recommended practices of, a me- of, a di- of established medical science. Like, guys, the whole reason medical science is there is to help us take care of ourselves. Like, their entire job is to see how our body works and to say, well, if your body's not working, you need to do this. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I mean, the way, I... The, way the way it's coming across to me is, yeah, you, you go for the natural stuff, whatever the reason. But at the same time, you're, you're not one of these you know, flitzos out there that is like, I'm only going to take natural because this is fabricated medical shit. That's not going to help me. And then fall over five weeks later from polio or something. Well, no. And, and the reason I'm like that is because, you know, um, there has been situations in my family where medical science has saved them. Mm -hmm. So I kind of believe in medical science science because not only my family, but some of my friends. Right. So, I mean, medical science is a really good thing. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. kind of what I'm, kind of what I was trying to get at there with my words and I'm, and all of that. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay. One of my cousins is autistic, and these kind of these stories kind of hit me close to home because of that. You know, it's, and my aunt's doing my, my aunt and my uncle are doing a really good job raising her, and you know she's doing very well for herself despite being autistic. And I'm just like seeing these people like advocating, oh, vaccine causes autism. No, it doesn't. Yeah. And nobody listens to that. And evidence is, like, right in front of me every time I see my cousin walking around, you know? But I guess they don't really understand that autism comes from genetics, um, various other things, you know? It has nothing to do with vaccines at all. People need to be more aware of that. And we've had, like, a rise of uh, anti-vaccine people out in California... Remember earlier this year with all the cases of, like, diseases that we thought were, you know, eliminated, like smallpox and stuff? Remember that couple outbreaks out in California? I forget what diseases they were, but... Yeah, and I still... I still, I blame Jenny McCarthy. Fuck Jenny McCarthy. and not. I know, way. right? Why? What's up with that? I don't it's, understand. Jenny... Okay. About the cases or about Jenny McCarthy? Jenny McCarthy? <laughs> Jenny McCarthy? Okay, she is one of the, the bigger voices for the anti-vaccine movement. That's going around. She was one of the people that has laid the claim that that vaccines can cause autism, even though they fucking don't. Well, yeah. I I don't understand people in general. That's kind of probably why I don't go out very often. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but uh, we gotta we gotta move on to the next one. And yeah, because ties- uh, yeah, because we're gonna get too, way too pissed off here. Oh, we might <laughs> get move even... on to the next story. We might even get oh, no, more no, no, no. Off. Okay, last thing. Oh, oh, okay, last go thing. Ahead. Last thing on this is my favorite thing about this article is the last two sentences. Mm-hmm. But hey, let's get back to nature. It'll make us feel better right up until our children die from easily preventable medical issues. America! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of my favorite part of that article. That is. That is, a good, that is a good part, yeah. Yes, that is. Oh, so... All right, next one before we get too angry. You know, this one might make us even more angry. Yeah. 
many Americans believe kids as old as 12 need adult supervision if they're going to play in public places, indoors or outside, according to a new poll that found a high number of people would support laws, making it illegal to allow a nine-year-old to play unsupervised at the park. Okay, before I go any further, before I go any further. I'm going to flip the table. I'm going to flip the table. I'm gonna flip a table right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Whee! Well, when you, well, you, while you're flipping your table, I just want to say, I grew up. Now, I may be a little skewed because I did grow grow up on military bases in my lifetime, and I was about eight or nine. We were on a military base. Again, yes, I, I'm, I'm double stressing that, so maybe a little skewed. But me and the neighborhood kids, we would all go out and play. We we would have our limits on where we could go. We couldn't like go too far, like past a certain person's house or what have you. We couldn't go out, you know, like into the woods in the back because there were people that might be hunting out there, you know, and for good reason why we were told not to go out there, and we didn't because we understood. Maybe it was because we were military brats, but we understood. Yeah, you don't fuck around. If somebody's out there trying to hunt and they could accidentally kill your ass and not realize until it's too late, oh shit, that's not a deer, that's a kid. And we had little to no supervision out there. You know, the our fathers, they were off doing their work thing. Our mothers were home watching TV, playing video games. At least my mother was. And we were all outside pretending to be video game characters. And, and it was fine. If people got hurt, we called up on one of the parents and we said, hey, we're hurt here. And the parent patched us up, sent us right the fuck back out. There were no cops needing to be called. Nobody was trying to run a drug ring. Nobody tried to kidnap us. Although, okay. to be fair, again, we were on a military base, so if somebody did try to kidnap us, they would have a whole platoon of army soldiers right down their ass. Well, okay. And and that's cool, and I get it that you're a little skewed because of that, but yeah. you got to look at it like there is more, um, at least in neighborhoods that I've lived in, mm -hmm. um, and neighborhoods that I've lived in in both New York and out, uh, New York City and outside of New York City, um, there there used to be a time, and I remember that I, I I remember my grandparents talking about this. There used to be a time where like everybody left their doors unlocked, yeah. like. It wasn't an issue. Like, everybody could do it, and, like, it wasn't an issue. Now, most of my friends that I know of either live in a building with a super and, um, you know, a buzzer into their building because they, you know, they have, you know, whatever, um, because they live in those buildings because they feel safer. I feel like a nine-year-old playing unsupervised at the park could be okay for some places, but, like, not every place can, can support you know, a structure where kids as old as nine or as young as nine can stay in an environment where they would feel safe while they're playing in a park. Like, especially for um, me, I don't know anybody who's this has happened to, but there are some pretty rough neighborhoods around parks in Brooklyn and Manhattan and even in Queens. And I know those parents in those neighborhoods would refuse to let their kids play in the park if they knew, like, if they were in those neighborhoods. Right. But, I mean, if you, if you got to look at it as it really depends on the area of where you're looking at, not where you're, not saying it should be a blanket law. I'm not saying that it should be a law at all. I'm just saying that for some parents, it's one of those, like, better safe than sorry things. Yeah. Like, they don't want their kids being, you know... Um, taken from them. They don't want their kids being, you know, hurt or you know what it is. That being said, when I was nine, I went out to the park that was in my development because I used to live in a townhouse mm -hmm. and we would all play out there for hours. And then like my mom would call me for dinner. She didn't really supervise us, but that was also because we were in a development and like there were so many townhouses around us that if something happened to us, somebody would see it. Right. And and you know what? I, I do agree that it should not be a law. At the, as, as you were talking, it kind of got me thinking, okay, you know what? It should be it should be more up to the parents. If the parent does not feel safe letting their child go and play at the park by themselves, then they should not do it. The parent should not do it. It should not be up to the police officers to enforce 
the parents the parents views on everybody else even if it's in the name of safety because every parent is different like say one nine-year-old okay this parent doesn't feel safe letting their nine-year-old but this parent does because maybe the other nine-year-old that is allowed to go out and play without adult supervision is able to better take care of himself and is less likely to to be harmed if something bad was to go down or would be smart enough to run the fuck away and run home and get mama right that sort of thing yeah and i used to live in a really um terrible part of brooklyn like not like not so terrible that it's like a problem but um, there was a park two blocks from my house, and um, I would walk the 10 blocks from the M train when the L train was out. Mm-hmm. And I actually, one day when I was when I was walking home from work, I saw a kid couldn't have been more than eight or nine years old, and he was playing in the park, and a police officer, and he was on a skateboard and whatever, and a police officer stopped him and said, where are your parents? And the kid was like, my parents are right there across the street in their house. Because their parents, his parents' house was facing the park, and his mother could see him. It wasn't an issue for him. Mm-hmm. And then there was this other little kid who was like, "Where are your parents?" And they're right there in the park with him. And he was also eight or nine years old. So I agree that it's different for each parent. I think that it really would depend, for me at least, it would really depend on what area I would be living in at that point in time when I had an eight or nine year old child. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm living in an area like where my mom lives, probably I would, you know, I would be okay with letting my kids play at, at, at the local park and, you know, be like, probably be around it, but not like, you know, keeping like a really close eye on them. But if I'm living in someplace like Bushwick, where I used to live, or even in Washington Heights, where I, you know, I currently have an apartment, I would kind of probably be like, okay, you know what, Johnny or Jane or whatever your name is. I really want you to have fun and have, you know, play with your friends, but I really do not feel comfortable with you playing with your friends without me there. Right. So you can either have the kids come over to my house, uh, to the apartment and have the kids play in the apartment. You guys can play in the living room. You guys can play video games. You guys can play Candyland, whatever you guys want to do, or you guys can play in the front of the, the, the building. That's fine, but you guys cannot go to the park. Right. And that's that's honestly the way it should be. It, it's right. it's up to the parent, not up to right. not up to the law, unless a law is being broken. Right. And I I grew up. Uh, my town is kind of uh, rural. I mean, we have like a town center where all the all the stores are and everything. It's very suburban, and we have like various little parks here and there. And the parents usually take the kids there anyway, just kind of like out of habit because. You know, we do kind of live in, like, little wooded areas. I mean, it's not exactly, like, you know, a deliverance or anything around here. It's more like, you know, a small town in southern New Hampshire. You know, we had, like, Lawrence, Massachusetts, like, a half an hour away. And there are some gangs and stuff that you have to watch out for. So uh, we basically just let the kids, you know, come with their parents to uh, one of the parks. It's called Field of Dreams. And, you know, all the kids go there. So, and it's it's fine. It's it's like uh, like Jeff said, it's just really up to the parent and you know, what they want to do. It shouldn't really be like a law or anything like that. Yeah. And, and, it, and I know that there is like helicopter parenting and you know, I know some parents that try to avoid that, like uh, my brother and his wife. So. Yeah, I mean, and even here, like to, to bring up my own personal thing now. We, we actually have a backyard. We let the kids go and play out in the backyard. We don't really – you know, we'll look out the window every now and then, but that's a backyard. We do have, like, a couple of parks in town, and, yeah, when the kids go to the park, my parents have to go, mainly because my parents are their ride. <laughs> right. So, you know, you kind of have to at that point. Yeah, and then I think where uh, my brother lives, um, you kind of need to take a car to the park where they have to play. You know, it's not exactly close by anyway. Yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll go from that, and we'll go to uh, one of our last stories this time. Uh, take a shot, everybody, because uh, we're going to Florida. Again, uh, we're going, really? Are we going, yes. are we going to Ash's show already? Wow. This is this is like this is okay. I just gotta say before you start the Florida thing, I I, I don't understand what is wrong with that state. I really don't. Like, I don't either. understand. I've, well, I, all right, I have a friend who lives in Florida. I have a couple friends who live in Florida, and he, he says that, well, people are crazy, Chris, because the sun is, like, two inches away from your face at all times. <laughs> that kind of, like, bakes the brain. So, yeah. yeah. 
He's not wrong. <laughs> well, there you go. He's not wrong. He is no, not he's wrong. not. Although, apparently, it's clo- a lot closer to this person in Callahan. Callahan, Florida. A Florida mother is outraged after her son was expelled from preschool because of a Facebook post on her personal page. On her personal page, rather. Personal page. I don't know what I was going wow, on. Wow, you really cannot talk today. Apparently you want not. Me to, you want me to read? Do you want me to read? No, I've got it. I've got it. Okay. Ashley Habat told a Jacksonville, Florida TV station that she was upset because the school didn't give parents more time to get ready for picture day. Habat later posted her frustration about it on Facebook, and the school told Habat her son, Will, could no longer attend. (laughs) Do she on the school's part? Do she's on do she on the school's part because that that should not affect whether or not the kid can be there? No one shouldn't. Habat said she doesn't regret expressing her opinion, which she said was posted to her private page only for her friends to see. Keep remember this. Regardless, she told the station she doesn't believe her son should be punished for something she wrote. I agree. Habat said she and her son were late for school one on picture day at Sunshire Christian Academy in Callahan. She told an administrator checking in her son that she thought the school didn't give enough notice of picture day. The administrator said they put a note in Will's folder the week before. How much you want to bet the note got lost? Or how much? Or yeah, if how much you want to those... bet that little Joey or or Mikey, whatever his name is, drew on the back of it, didn't like it, threw it away? Yeah. Or or the other thing that could have happened is is that the kid either brought the kid didn't even think to bring the note home because you know how they they give responsibility to those to like like little kids and said please give this to your mom and not everybody listens. Mm-hmm. It could right. be one of those situations where she didn't even know that the note was in her fo- in his folder. Right. Which, I which always is... put stuff in my I, hey, I always put stuff in my uh, backpack. I didn't always give it to my parents on time, but hey, it was still there. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, she never expected the school to see her post. She said. Now here's the kicker. Remember how I remember how it was said. She posted to her private page for only her friends to see. She tagged the school in the post. Oh God! You idiots! <laughs> you don't. You idiots! If you're Sorry. trying to keep somebody or something from seeing something you are writing about them, you do not fucking tag them. Or you know what you could do? You could do that thing where they allow you to only post to certain people. So like, if you only want to, like your close friends to see it, mm-hmm. like they only see it. Or if you only want like one person not to see it, you can tag that one person as blocked. From that post, and mm-hmm. you can block them that way. But don't tag the damn school in the post, lady. Come on, man. Yeah, that kind of. This just... is like Facebook 101. Yeah. yeah. We need to learn how to Facebook. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, I, you know, just within the past couple of weeks, I, I had a moment of, of, of needing to unleash some semi personal shit on Facebook. I named nobody, yeah, and you and you know what? It, it was a last, and actually, I didn't delete it. I just kind of uh, uh, made it to a different thing. But, but at the same time, nobody was tagged, so the people I were venting at never knew it was actually them. Yes, there's actually more than one or two in that personal post. I'm not going to go any further into that. And you know, it's all well and good. It's done. It's over now. This lady, however. If you're going to talk shit about somebody, unless you are prepared for the consequences, don't fucking tag them. Yeah. And I don't know how much of my tail I'm eating, but you know what? I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not eating my own tail here, but I can just tell you, oh my god, lady, you have the dumb. Seriously, do not not tag the school or any authority if you're venting, you know? It's going to bite you in the ass, and... Later, yeah, just like, leading later in the story, yeah, it's uh, biting, in, biting in the ass. Oh wow. Yeah, the the mother is stupid for for tagging the school because really you shouldn't unless unless you really want to try and accomplish some shit or get have some consequences come your way or you're prepared for them. And the school is stupid because you're punishing the kid for what the mother did. That's not exactly. cool. Exactly. So fuck the mother. Fuck the school. Fuck all them. Fuck Florida. Except for the kid, because the, well, well, yeah, the kid didn't the do kid. anything wrong. Right, right, right. Thank you. Yeah, not the, the kid's kid. in it. Not the kid. The, kid, the, kid's, the, kid, the kid didn't do anything wrong. The, the, the only potential thing he could have done wrong 
is not give the damn paper to his mom, but like every freaking kid does that, so it's not really an issue. Yeah. It's more of a right. oh them damn kids. But in terms of like this story, okay, first of all, holy crap, Florida, like what will you think of next? Actually don't answer that question because you're probably gonna answer that tomorrow night. Anyway. <laughs> And then um, I'm going, and then I'm going to Skype you, saying, "You see what you did? Do you yeah, you're totally you gonna. Did? Somebody's gonna t- contact me tomorrow and say, "See what you did? Yeah. You're a terrible person." Anyway, and then, um, okay, in terms of this lady, this Ashley Habat. Okay, here's the thing. Mother is wrong for posting. Is not wrong for posting on her private page about for her friends. Right. What she did wrong was she tagged the school. What the school did wrong was expel the child, even though he did nothing wrong. Exactly. And even if he didn't, if he did do something wrong, tagging his mother tagging the school in a Facebook post does not war, warrant expelling the child. It's not expulsion. It's not an expulsion offense. Yeah. That's just okay. Maybe detention. Maybe once, but it's preschool, so I guess you can't do that. Maybe he's sitting in the corner for like an hour or so. Yeah, or like giving the kid like a half, an, uh, like twenty minutes in the corner, or no recess for like a day. Yeah, but even even then, I mean, if the kid was dutiful or or just forgot or whatever, you know that that wouldn't. I I still I would not have punished the kid. Oh think. God, no! I, I would never know. have punished that child. No, no. If I was the school, you know, school nothing would happen to the kid. You know, it would just be like, you know what? It's unfortunate. So whatever. Oh, and real quick, our last story. <laughs> Politico that published. Our last story wasn't a Florida story. <gasps> nope, nope. We've we've got time for a little bit of one more. Politico published a leaked report commissioned by two Republican lobbying groups on how the party can better attract female voters. Oh, this ought to be good. Well, getting rid of Sarah Palin is a good idea. <laughs> the report, based on a re- recent poll of 800 female registered voters, as well as a series of focus groups, is titled Republicans and Women Voters, Huge Challenges, Real Opportunities. The central challenge facing the Republican Party is that women, particularly single women and women who have graduated from college, are barely receptive to its policies and are likely to consider the party and are likely to consider the party intolerant, lacking in compassion, and stuck in the past. Well, he, I wonder why. Yeah, here's where the quote-unquote real opportunity comes in. Uh-oh. If only the Republicans could explain to these women that they are wrong, their votes would come flooding in. The report says that it is a lack of understanding between women and Republicans that closes many minds to Republican policy solutions. Republicans can attract the female vote by attacking the Democratic claim that GOP policies do not promote fairness for women and dealing honestly with any disagreement on abortion before moving on to other issues. Just – Jess, well, as far as I know, you are you are a female. You identify as female. You have the anatomy of a human female. You have. So the, I think this would be very, awesome. very. This would be very pertinent to you. Do you and, have Do you have any idea how long I've been hitting my 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 the palm of my hand against my forehead? Multiple face palm. Um, I've been doing it for the last thirty five seconds. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you probably got like have a like, nice red mark, yeah. That's probably, scary. and that's fine. Okay, first of all, yes, I am a woman. Mm-hmm. Last time I checked, and yeah. <laughs> last time, um, <laughs> central challenge facing the Republican Party is that women, particularly single women, I am single, and women who have graduated college, I have done that, are barely receptive to its policies, are likely to consider the party intolerant, lacking in compassion, and stuck in the past. Well, that's because they are. And the real opportunity part of if women, if only Republicans could explain to women that they're wrong. Um, okay, <laughs> what's really funny about this to me is that um, most of my friends who are also women and who have also graduated from college think that the Republicans are wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like okay, politically, politically, I'm pretty liberal when it comes to political leanings. Um, I'm pro I'm pro choice, I'm pro gay marriage, I'm pro everything pretty much except for like, you know, pro murder. I'm not pro murder. Um I'm pro getting rid of Florida by any means possible, but I'm not <laughs> pro after after you leave, of course. After you yeah. leave, of course. But um and and my relatives leave. But after after that, Mine like, too. Sketch. yeah, um pro gonna, pro nope. in sketch. Yeah, get get everybody out that we actually care about and then just like cast Florida into the ether and I would be fine. Um, but 
here's the problem with I have with Republicans is I have friends who are Republicans and so I really and I really, really try to respect them because I do think that they're intelligent and I do think that they have some good ideas. But here's the thing about um, Republicans um, attacking the Democratic claim of, you know, promote fairness. Yeah, that's all true. Here's the thing. This is why I like Democrats better is because they treat women like human beings, yep. not as cattle. I feel like Republicans don't see anything and women as anything but a breeding ground. Honestly, I feel like I feel like and, and this might not be fair of me, but um, you remember how um, Hitler treated women as like, you know, breeding machines and said, you know, Aryan race needed Aryan women to, you know, bear the children, blah, blah, blah. Um, I feel like it's kind of like that in that they don't think about what the women is, what the women are thinking. They don't think that, you know, women have feelings or emotions or anything. Or if they do, they just completely ignore them. Yeah, that, that's what I, that's the gist of what I get to, honestly. Because it's like, let's see, uh, let's see, consider the party intolerant. Um, let's see, intolerance, intolerant to new ideas. You don't want gay people to get married. You don't want the majority of black people to vote or, unless they or, vote for you. Or, or, right. or, or my favorite thing, my favorite thing, and I'll let you, I'll let you, I'll let you go, Chris, I promise. But my favorite thing about the Republican Party is, um, now, I live in a state that already had pretty much free health care, like under Medicaid, like our, because I live in the state of New York, um, Medicaid is kind of designed to be free and like taxes pay for it. But it, it, it's one of the states that actually had free health care before it was mandatory for the entire country. Right. And, um, you know, I like that you know, Obama tried and put us on the path to universal health care for every state. Republicans would not even consider that. Like, they wouldn't even think, like, they, they've spent the last how many years since it became a law to try to get rid of it, do anything necessary, like the whole Hobby Lobby thing, and, like, try to do, and put as many freaking holes in it as possible. Like, that's why nothing can get done in this country is because we have a two-party system where most other countries have a multi-party system where most of those parties have to form coalitions to get crap done. Like, that's why it works in, it works better to have a parliamentary multi-party system sometimes because they can work together and they can be like, well, you and I have similar ideals, but you and I are from completely separate parties, so, but we can work together because this is an issue we both care about as parties and we can work together and, you know, face off against the conservatives who think that this is a bad idea. You know what I mean? That's why I think this country really does need a multi-party system. I don't think it's working as a two-party system. No, it's not. And I've studied politics in college, and my sister-in-law is was a Republican. She can tell you she's been kind of frustrated with the, uh, her own party for a while. I mean, she's like, why are they doing this? She considers herself moderately Republican. She doesn't really go all extreme, all out like this. She shakes her head. She shakes her head. She kind of wonders what the hell is going on here, and so do all my Republican friends who also happen to be uh, women. So I just like scratch my head, like guys, stop digging yourselves in a hole because if you keep bashing half the population of the, the planet, you're not going to get votes. You're not going to get anything done because the other half is going to be. Uh, Carrying their favorite, like saying, "Okay, yes, we're gonna get you more affordable health care and stuff." Then the Republicans, in turn, say, "Oh no, we're just gonna block you at every turn," and that's what they've been doing to our president. You know, they've yeah. been blocking him at every turn. Okay, and and here's the other thing I really like about the story is here comes the part. Okay, now earlier in this article they mentioned R. R. Reno, the editor of First Things, which is a guy. I I assuming I'm assuming. Yeah, it's um, it, Reno's a dude. Okay, Reno's a dude. Okay, so here comes the part of the exercise where Reno carefully instructs this fantasy lady liberal that she is choosing or choosing poorly, and that the Republican Party is the logical choice for a woman in her circumstance. This woman is suffering from quote various kinds of personal unhappiness related to the lack of clear norms of for how to live. Reno writes, she secretly quote wants to get married and feels vulnerable because she isn't, and vulnerable because she's not confident she can. And so actually she act, should support the party that wants to force people into traditional marriages, thus pr improving her chances to get married herself. Perhaps she may, can marry a gay man. 
if only our hypothetical cat lady could get on board, she would get a husband. The Republicans would get another married woman to add to their key demographic, and gay people would be totally screwed. Yay? In short, Republicans understand women plenty. It's women who don't understand themselves. Sounds like a promising strategy that will work many, many, many sad single ladies that Republicans have invented in their brains. Next step, finally granting imaginary women the right to vote. (laughs) To me, that pretty much explains to me what Republicans, like the Republican problem is with me. And I feel like that's exactly like hits the nail on the head. Like it's gotten to the point where they're basically trying to invent things to help them. Yeah. They don't need help. All no, they don't need is... help to be stupid. Like they're just being stupid on their own. Yeah. Now, now I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this, and we gotta get out of here because we're about out of time. Uh, if you're if you're a member of the GOP, I don't mean a voter. I mean an actual politician aligned with the GOP. This is for you. Okay. Uh, number one, when it comes to women, women are people. Tim Allen. Who made his you know who made his big jump in his career starting with the whole machismo ar, 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 ar thing? He understands this. He made his early career on the machismo stuff. He understands that women are people too. It's like oh shit, if he can understand it, why the fuck can't you old trusty white motherfuckers? <laughs> and admittedly, some not white, but mostly white trusty motherfuckers. Which yeah. which is a what more descriptive than I probably should be. But anyway, so that's oh, the first thing. That's pretty are accurate. Yeah. Women are people. Mm-hmm. Women deserve the exact same rights as we white men. In, in fact, everybody deserves the same rights as a white man. You know? Women have should have the right to choose what happens to their bodies. Whether they want to... Get, whether or not they want to have a breast reduction or a breast implant, doesn't matter. Whether or not they want to carry a child to term. Whether or not they want to get pregnant in the first place. Whether or not they want to get tattoos. And except for the pregnancy thing, because, well, men aren't biologic, you know, biologically, men typically cannot do that. There's the whole difference about gender identity. That's a whole different issue. But, but that for our, the sake of this our, argument, yeah. for the sake of this argument, Men cannot get pregnant, so of course we're not going to have a say in whether or not we can get pregnant because we physically can't. Women should have a say and often do, and that is great. That is awesome. And legally, they're being able to be backed up. But you guys, you guys, the GOP, you're trying to go backwards. We don't need to go backwards. We need to go forward. We need to go into the 21st century, to the 22nd century. We don't need to go back to 1865 and be and before. I just chose 1865 as just as just a as a point. If somebody wants to be like, well, why'd you choose that? It was just random. I pulled it out of my ass. Yeah. Bottom line: women are people. Let's treat them as such. Give them the equality that they deserve. And let's move on and find and, and, and work on bigger issues, such as being able to survive the imminent climate change. I think that's a bigger issue, but we can't do that because we're too busy wondering whether or not women should be equal. It's Meanwhile, sim- because we're gonna... it's simple. Because it's simple. Women should yeah. – it, it should be. Equality should be there. All right. Meanwhile, we're going to freeze our asses off like we did uh... – well, oh, I'm sorry if I – I don't know if I can swear on this show, but uh... – Meanwhile, we're going to be freezing our butts off uh, this winter, probably, because we may have another one like last winter. Well, really nuts. Yeah. So, so in short, let's, let's, let's agree that all of these social issues, equality for everybody, you can practice whatever religion you want if you're a woman and you don't, ha- and you don't want to have a child. That is your right to not have a child. If an accident happens, you have the right – to uh, you to fix that accident regardless of what i or somebody else may think because hey it's your body bodily autonomy awesome we need that equality once we get that through our heads then you know we can actually put more manpower behind surviving climate change because that's what and other things like bashing the heads of the anti-vaccine people for one there is that too but yes but yeah, so let's wrap things up here. Yes, yes, we do need to. Uh, Chris, if we wanted to find you on the internet, where could we find you? You can find me at Twitter, 
with the heck with the aster um what is that at symbol c twelve twenty seven and you can find me at my website starbolts dot starbolts dot blogspot dot com sweet and if we wanted to talk to Jess and get to know her a little bit and and everything on the social medias where could we find her uh well you could find me on Twitter at Raven Allegria thirteen at Tumblr, uh, ravenallegria13.tumblr.com. Uh, I have a Facebook page, Fool's Gold, the mo- uh, Mediocrity of the Golden Age of Hollywood. I also have a Patreon um, where you can donate to make my show better than it already is. Or if you don't want to donate and you just want to stop by and say, hey, your show sucks, that's fine too. Um, <laughs> I am also on RT Gomer Productions as well as Nerdvice. And I'm friends with pretty much everybody in this community um, with the exception of like two or three people. So... Um, oh, I'm adding you to Skype right now, so you count. Oh, me. well, hey! there you go. There you Yay! go. You made a new friend. Yay! Make oh, a new friend is awesome. Oh, and then you can also email me any questions or concerns or ideas that you guys have at uh, ravenallegria13 at gmail.com. Sweet. And now we get to me, and I get to ramble a little bit longer. <laughs> You can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at Gomer21XX. If you like the shows that I do, like these podcasts, the videos, or what have you, and you want to toss money at me for more production value, or even so much as to you know, help me put food on the table when I inevitably move, then you can head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. You can donate as little as a dollar, and everything will go towards productions. And again, once I reach that point, it will go towards putting food on my table once I inevitably move. And... You can also find my stuff on RT Gomer Productions and Nerdvice. That's rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com, both of which have their own Facebook pages. Check them out. Give them a like. And um, I actually need to try to be a little bit more active than the uh, automatic cross-postings on the Facebook page. Uh, but also we do have a uh, site Tumblr that I believe that is RT Gomer Prod. That's either RT Gomer Prod or yeah. RT Gomer Productions, one of the two. It's not that hard to find <laughs> on Tumblr. You can also find me on RT Gomer. I forgot to add that. Gomer's kind of like giving me a dirty look because I didn't add uh, R.D. Gomer. You can't even see him. How do you know that? <laughs> I'm psychic. Yeah, he is psychic, and and, and, it, and it's feeling a little crowded in here. Um, no, anyway. Um, but yeah, and if I'm going to go ahead and start doing this, starting with this show and the and shows after this, uh, if you've got questions you want us to read out or answer on the show or whatever, uh, you can use the RT Gomer Productions Tumblr, or you can go over to the uh, official Thespian Talk Tumblr, which I've been neglecting because I've been just so, sort of just reblogging. But you can go to either one of those. Just make sure it's a question just for the show, and we'll we, we'll even answer it on the air if you guys want us to. So it'll be kind of neat. I like that little bit of audience interaction, and that would be kind of fun and awesome to be able to do that. Uh, so, and of course, if I, I would be very much remiss if I did not mention my lovely title card artist Becky Hopkins, who is not only my title card artist, but she is also my girlfriend. And you can find her stuff over at patreon.com slash beckyhop, which also has links to her DeviantArt page, her own homepage. And if you give her enough money, she will do a 30-second animation for you. Yes, enough money, 30 seconds of animation. Did I mention she's an award-winning animator? Go get some. Seriously, it's amazing. Okay, now I've got an idea. Yeah, there you go. Now go – now just throw, throw some money at her. She'll do it for you. Uh, again, that's patreon.com slash beckyhop. Okay, I just want to point out that you said thirty sex, and then you said go get some. I just want to, I just want to point that out. Okay, just want to point that out. Oh dear. <laughs> well, well, so sorry, Becky. Edit, edit. I apologize oh, for your boyfriend. I swear to God, I apologize for your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well then, well, if she gets propositioned because of this, then she will come and she will probably give me a look and then. And then we'll probably be like, okay, is this person hot? Yes. You want them? Yes. <laughs> because, wow. because we're that sounds comfortable like with my, each other. It sounds like my old relationship. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, because we're just that comfortable, and I'm probably going to be in trouble, so we're going to get out of here. Thank you guys for listening. And until next time, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with Jess and Seafara signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.